Olive and Lutika, and they're going to talk about the COPD and how climate change is going to affect the um, prevalence of COPD. Yeah, so our presentation is COPD, How Climate Change and Air Pollution Pose Urgent Threats. My name is Nikhil Patel. I'm Oliver Gani. And I'm Gertis Energy. So this is how we'll conduct our presentation today. We'll start off going over what our research question was, and then we'll kind of go into what COPD is. And then we'll have two sections. One, how pollution and COPD link, and then how climate change and COPD link. And then I will have our last section talking about solutions and policies. So first is our research question. What are the effects of air pollution and climate change on chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as COPD, and what can be done about it? This is the question that we base all of the following research on. All right, so now we're gonna talk about breaking down specifically what, what COPD is, so you guys get a basis for what we're talking about. So COPD is made of two distinct conditions. The first one is chronic bronchitis, which is what happens when the um, bronchial tubes or the air tubes in your lungs become inflamed. This causes your lungs to release um, sputum or mucus and often can result in the person who has chronic bronchitis to cough a lot as a means to try to clear out their lungs. Um, if you want to try to imagine like what it would be like living with that, imagine going through your entire day getting to breathe through a drinking straw. Um, it's not great. <laughs> um, and the second condition is called emphysema, and that's what happens when pollutants and other irritants ca um, cause the alveoli, or otherwise known as the air sacs in your lungs, to become damaged, which can cause them to not stretch as they're supposed to, or even collapse. Um, this is an issue because they trap dead air inside the lungs, and if you can't exhale all the way, there's less room for air, new fresh air to enter your lungs, and that means you've got less oxygen to work with. Um, both of these conditions cause difficulty breathing, and although they are usually considered a result of smoking, they're also linked to ambient air pollution and household pollution, um, and oftentimes they are one of the most prevalent diseases that pollution causes. Um, between 2012 and 2016, an estimated 3.7 million people died because of climate change, in, or not climate change induced, but pollution induced and similarly climate change induced COPD. So now we're going to talk about pollution. I'll start off talking about, about outdoor pollutants. 18% um, of deaths due to COPD were due to outdoor pollutants. So now let's go talk about these air quality groups. The World Health Organization classified several air quality groups. That's particulate matter, ozone, nitrogen oxide, and sulfur dioxide. Out of those air quality groups, particulate matter is the most common. And this can come from carbon emissions, tobacco smoke, and biomass smoke exposure. Because particulate matter is the most common, there is a lot of components to it, including carbon, sulfate, nitrate, black carbon, and more, even including water. And it's also important to recognize and acknowledge who and where people get exposed to outdoor pollutants the most, and that's low to middle income countries. Low, to middle, low and middle income countries experience the most outdoor air pollutants as PM 2.5. And also with the number 2.5, all of these air pollutants are 2.5 micrometers or less. That means that they're very minuscule. You can't see them with your human eye. So they're very small and they can easily get inhaled. Um, also, uh, the reason why that uh, there's a lot of pollution with low and middle income countries is increased industrial production, fires like garbage fires and field fires. And also with cities and urban areas, the two most common sources of pollution are coal and vehicles. A more global stat is that 14% of global emissions are from vehicles. That plays a vital part in the global climate change. With coal, when you combust coal, that releases almost every single particle I just talked about. That gets released into your community. That gets released into the environment. And that can, in turn, affect people with COPD. 
So now we have indoor pollutants. The thing about indoor pollutants is that they're the same as outdoor pollutants. It's just in a different concentration. It's just a less concentration. And there's many ways that people can uh, get indoor pollutants um, exposed to them. And that's by cigarette smoking is a big one, poor ventilation, combustion, um, pollution from construction or furniture. And three billion people worldwide cook using polluting fires, three billion. And this is because they cook using kerosene, coal, and biomass. Out of, that th out of those three billion people, three million people have died using the same fires that they're, cook they're cooking with because of these outdoor air without, um, indoor air pollutants. According to the World Health Organization, exposure to pollution causes one in four fatalities in low and middle income countries. One in four fatalities. With cigarette smoking, that's a big part of how people get COPD. With secondhand smoke, not only has that been proven to release all of these indoor air pollutants, but it's also been proven to worsen the quality of life. So now we have non-sustainable energy production, and we're gonna be talking about fossil fuels mostly. Because of these fossil fuels, that's how we get these indoor and outdoor pollutants. Uh, just a little, just to talk about fossil fuels a little bit, just to backtrack, this background information. But, um, hundreds of millions of years ago, Earth was covered with various plants, algae, and plankton. They got their energy through photosynthesis, store that energy in their chlorophyll. Um, but as they died, over time, they decomposed into fossil fuels. Now if we flash back to modern day, fossil fuels are known to be an energy source, but also if we burn fossil fuels, the general public knows that we can create these air pollutants. For example, if people are burning coal, we can get sulfur dioxide. Um, now we have an example of the Great London Fog of 1952. In London of 1952, December 1952, there was a great uh, smog over London and this is because of a period of cold weather. That cold weather collected air pollutants, and this was mostly from the combustion of coal, and it resulted in a week-long uh, smog over London. And this unfortunately killed an estimated 10 to 12,000 people. Now we will be discussing climate change and its effects on COP. Alright, so because of climate change and global warming, we will be seeing a lot more extreme weather conditions in the world. These conditions such as hotter temperatures, colder temperatures, and extremely high and low humidity levels can worsen the condition of those with COPD. So first of all, hotter temperatures. A study in New York City found that COPD hospitalizations increased by 7.64% for every one degree Celsius increase in temperature after 29 degrees. Scientists are still not sure of exactly why hotter temperatures makes COPD worse. However, it has been found that in asthma patients, they tend to have constriction in their lung airways due to hotter temperatures, um, and that could be the same for COPD as well. Next, we have colder temperatures. Um, a study found that older people with COPD have a 19% higher mortality rate on colder days. This means that colder temperatures can increase COPD mortality rates. And finally, extremely high and low humidity levels can lead to extreme temperatures, which can worsen COPD symptoms. The higher the humidity level, the lower the temperatures, and the worse COPD can be. So therefore, higher temperatures, colder temperatures, and extreme humidity levels can lead towards worse COPD. Um, so another thing to consider is a lot of people know that because pollution leads to the greenhouse gases which warm up the atmosphere because they trap heat, that pollution leads to climate change. But it actually works in a cycle because as the air heats, more particulate matter and other pollutants stay trapped which is an issue, first of all, because that means that you are a lot more exposed to the pollution that can cause or make COPD worse. But it also means that it gives pollution a greater chance to spread. Um, it's causing areas known for their clean air, such as the Alps, to become more polluted, which means that places usually known for respiratory rehabilitation centers 
are becoming more difficult to use. There was a study in, let's see, in 2017 um, that asked various COPD patients in the Alps what their opinions are rated on a one to four scale of how disturbing the in increased pollution is. And on average, they rated it about 3.5, which sits somewhere between disturbing and absolutely disturbing, which kind of just goes to show how big of an issue this is. All right, so although there's no cure for COPD, we can take a few daily actions in our lives to make the condition better. First, um, people who smoke can create secondhand smoke, which pollutes the air and makes it difficult for those with COPD. Therefore, with a strong link between smoking and COPD, you can um, decrease the amount you smoke or quit altogether. Second, you can use clean energy to help those with COPD. Specifically, using cleaner fuels, improving stoves to burn more efficiently, and vent those same emissions to the outside. And finally, we can use cleaner transportation, which will reduce emissions. This will also help the children, the elderly, and those with respiratory and chronic illnesses. And not only those with COPD will be um, helped, but also all these people. So another thing that we wanted to discuss is in urban areas, there's a lot of pollution. Studies show that about 75% of global emissions come from urban centers, which means that larger scale policies need to be put in place to help reduce that number. Um, so the first one is based on transportation. As Nikhil mentioned, a huge amount of emissions come from transportation. And so one study looked at what happened during the coronavirus lockdowns in several cities in Canada. And what they discovered is um, after the lockdowns happened, emissions from vehicles dropped about 30%, which was pretty significant. Um, this, we also looked at what this means in terms of policy moving forward. And some of the key things are making sure that public transit is available so that more people can get to where they need to be with less emission costs or with less emissions produced and also about making sure that when city planning is happening, putting key locations near to where people live so that they don't have to spend as much time on the road to get to where they need to be. Um, the other thing we looked at was coal. Um, the, also, like Nikhil said, coal produces a lot of emissions and pollution, which can greatly harm respiratory health. And so one of the researches, research projects that we looked at in Dublin uh, was looking at the general respiratory health before and after a coal ban in 2002. And so if you look at the dotted line on the graph, that shows the time when coal was banned. And you can see before that, the um, amount of pollution in the air was much higher. And after the ban, it fell by about 70% and then stayed consistently lower, um, the pollution specifically being black smoke. And also respiratory-related deaths um, fell by about 15% in tandem with the lowering pollution. And as lowered pollution stayed down, the respiratory deaths stayed down as well, further indicating that the two were correlated. This means that reducing the use of coal near cities could greatly help respiratory health, and also just banning trade within the cities could help um, influence people to look towards other uh, energy solutions, which would also help with respiratory health and general pollution levels. Thank you, Skimming. There's a lot of references. <laughs> 